So what we're going to do now, we're going to have um, two presentations. So the first one I announced already, which is um, Joan and Maria. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to hear from um, Lydia, who's going to tell us about her pledge to start a paired learning program um, to enable junior doctors and managers to get to know each other. So what we'll do is we'll hear, um, we'll hear Joan and uh, Maria first. So um, are you both there, Joan and Maria? Yeah, we are. Hello. Hello. Hello, Joan. Hello, Maria. The virtual floor is yours. So, um, so over to you. Hello. Hi, I'm Bonnie. He's not talking. Hello. He's Clyde. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can we all see the presentation now, then? Yeah, we can see it. Um, we can see everything perfectly. We can hear you loud and clear. Brilliant. Well, we just put this presentation together for celebrating our journey. So if we can have the next slide. We basically pledged to inspire others to reignite their passion and encourage them to believe in their own ability to make a difference. We wanted to actually start the ball rolling again and get people to actually pick up and realise that they can make a difference where they are, no matter who they are. Next slide. Next slide is a little video that ex oh, is the, is the statistics. Basically, uh, where we, we try to reignite the passion, and these years, um, six million are gone from less, less than 7,000 places a year ago. Now, and so, it's, can you get a bit further, it's Helen, can you get a bit further away from the microphone? I'm, I'm in the other, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, keep going. Yeah. No, do you want to carry on? If it's a hot with the microphone, you carry on. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. So yeah. we've, then got the, we've now got the East Midlands, we've got the statistics up here. Um, yeah. Just because we found them quite amazing. In 2013, 6,385 pledges were made in the East Midlands. And then we kind of wanted to break that target ourselves. Um, and we sure did. In 2014, there were 63,238 pledges made in the East Midlands. He's got the monkey. <laughs> Hi, Joan. So we, did, we did do awesome. The whole of the East Midlands came together, and we did go from bottom up. So we just wanted to show you the statistics there. And if we can have the next slide. This was, I'm not sure whether the videos will actually play or not. We've done a couple of videos of our actual journey that seem to have. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, yeah. Oh, we're buffering. <laughs> we actually took a teddy bear chimpanzee along for the journey with us, and people laughed at first, but everybody got behind it in the end. And it was just something different to get people involved and start the conversation rolling of what change day was. It made it fun, and it put it put the laughter back into it. Sorry, Maria. I think we're just having trouble playing all the videos. You're okay. Yeah, I don't think they're going to play on here, so we're just going to just let us know when you want us to advance the slides. No problem. We've put some on YouTube anyway. Yeah. If yeah, people want great. to check them out, they are on YouTube, and we tweet, we'll tweet them, shall we? We'll, we'll tweet the link for people to watch the videos, because there's two, so we can do that if you want to go to the next slide. So basically, how did we do the do bit? It was easy for us to do the pledging and the promising and the speaking. It was the doing that we wanted to discuss and see where people could learn maybe a little bit. If we can have the next slide. Between me and Joan, we kind of covered a few pledges of our own. The first one that we've mentioned about wanting to inspire others. 
but our first way of doing that was to lead by example. So between us, we pledged some individually and some together. Joan himself did the smile pledge where he pledged to never leave a patient without having them return his smile. The year before, he pledged to just make sure that he smiled. So this year, he take it a step further and actually he pledged to get that smile returned to him. And like you can see, we still do this and we make sure that every contact does count. The visiting pledge was one that we're both are continuing to do the do, as you can see. And we're challenging and encouraging reviews of adult hospital ward visiting hours to make it more patient and visitor friendly. So rather than kicking our visitors out of the ward at three o'clock and letting them back in at five, whereas I was finding them sat in the car park for two hours waiting to come back in, We've now tried to encourage that so in all areas, so it's more of an open visiting. In our own place of work, they've taken that up and um, we've got different visiting hours now. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was for sure. Um, there's a few other hospitals that I know have reviewed their hours, so that is going in the right direction. It's something yeah. that we'll continue to work with. Kings New Hospital have changed hours and the Chesterfield Royal Hospital have changed hours. The one-page profi yeah. one page profile pledge is something we both pledge for and passionately believe in. We pledge to raise the awareness of the excellent potential benefits that these one-page profiles can actually have for staff and for the patient and for the visitors. And we've done that in many ways. Through the Helen Sanderson Association and her one-page profile, we've worked together and we've developed our own we always carry them with us, we start interviews with them, we give them people in meetings. And rather than us leaving that room and then forgetting us, which I'm not sure they would do anyway, but it just helps them and they've got that reminder. I've used them on the ward with patients. The patients have done them and I've used them as a staff member. Um, I've actually found patients explaining me as being the nurse. No, the proper one, the one, the one with the dog, because they get to know a little bit about me. So breaking them barriers down between patients and the care. They have been a massive success. The Hel Helen Sanderson herself pledged that she would have a thousand for the change day. And I think it was 11,000. Um, she signed so many different trusts up. His nurses from 17 trusts have worked with her with this. So everybody's jumped on board. We've kind of twittered it away as well and got all sorts of different professionals and everybody really to actually put their in. We've even got one from a superhero as well. <laughs> Can we have the next slide? Some more of the pledges that we made, and like you can see, that how we've done the do bit. The Compassion Circles is really Joan's um, area, massively. I'm, I'm not sure how well we can hear Joan. Yeah, we do, but Maxine at 7 o'clock is talking about Compassionate Circles and she's the best to talk about them. I can't hear you very well, Joan, so I'm assuming others can't. So if I can, I can fill in the gaps there. The Compassion Circles, Joan himself pledged to support and encourage the youth of these um, throughout our work areas. We certainly did do this and even held, Andy Bradley came and actually held a Compassion Circle for us at our regional event that we held for NHS Change Day, um, just to raise that awareness and the benefit there is in them. So that is one that been continual as well and we still are doing that. I know Joan's working closely with Andy to carry on with that as well and to carry on championing that. The Dementia Friends Pledge was mine, um, even though both of us do it, it's my passion there and I pledge to break down the barriers that people living with dementia are going to face every single day and those barriers are what we as human beings actually put there. They're not there to start with, we put them there. So that pledge itself, we have done and we are doing and I will always do. 
We'd run awareness sessions for staff members, for visitors, patients themselves have come to awareness sessions. I've run them in the local Tesco's, in the local school, just to raise that awareness and actually just to create a more dementia friendly society really. Um, it's one that's definitely been taken further by people. They've picked it up and ran with it massively. And I know right down to our, in my work area in the hospital, our porters, our estates, our domestics, all them staff have also done the training as well and have all had massively good things to say about it. So for the benefits there. Um, and some of them have actually taken that further. The Pledge of the Change Day song was how I got started with the Change Day this time. Um, by getting involved with this. Kirst Day wanted to do a Change Day song and we ended up having 10 manic days of no life really and living in the studio whilst we put together the lyrics and everything um, and got it recorded. So the Change Day song was the NHS, um, the fairy tale of the NHS rather than the fairy tale of New York. So we did, we did change the words in there. It is on YouTube, so you will have to check that out. It's, um, it's one that definitely, again, the best benefit of it was starting that conversation between people about Change Day. Can we have the next slide? The final pledge was me and Joan pledged to continue to show people the difference they can make. Um, this is definitely something that's topped our doing the do bit, bit really, because um, we've organised a carnival in the area, which has gone from being a tiny little affair to being the biggest event that this area will see this year. Um, I wanted it to have a knock-on effect for the whole community. It's got a health and well-being element running through the carnival, but it's brought the whole community together. We've got the health promotion down there and the fitness side, but we've put the fun back into it as well. Um, so that's on the 26th of July. Not that I'm plugging it or anything, but it is definitely on the 26th of July. And it, it's just to take the proactive approach, really, because it is our community that in the end, I've been using NHS services more than likely at some point. So we're trying to catch them before they actually get there. And I believe that's the final slide. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. I will. I promise I will tweet the link now for you for the video. Yeah. So, um, no, thank you ever so much. Um, Maria and Joan, and I'm sorry we've had a few technical dis difficulties, and um, Joan, in terms of hearing you um, very well, and well done, Maria, for kind of standing in and, um, and being the anchor woman there. Um, so, um, a couple of things, some things I wanted to ask you. Also, I would, um, I think, is Helen Sanderson still on? Um, because um, uh, Helen was, um, was on just shortly, I'm just see if she's still with us. Um, yes, she is. So, Helen, you know, given that, um, um, you know, Maria and um, Joan uh, are obviously very passionate about uh, one-page profiles, would you like to say something um, about that? Are you with us, Helen? Can we unmute you? Can you hear us? And what would you say if we can mute, if we can um, unmute Helen? So, um, um, Maria, you'll have to speak on behalf of you and Joan. What are your plans for Change Day 2015? Oh, um, we've had <laughs> We've had the monkey this time. We've had the whole love affair story of Charlie Change Day, Chimp and Monkey Wellbeing. Um, we're going to stick with the fun side, the fun element. The Bonnie and Clyde element is being tweaked a little bit and we've got a third member, so we have got three amigos in the team, more or less. Um, we are going down the superhero route. I'm personally wanting to engage with more of the younger population. I think it's a population that was, was missed out on this time round. Um, so I've already spoken to the schools and they're interested. I've spoken to the local colleges and they're interested as well. So 
we shall see. But I'm not revealing too much. Okay, watch this watch space, but we look forward. I don't know, I'd like to see, maybe see your statistics for next year. You know, you're going to get like 630,000 um, next time. Oh, don't set you on a target, please. Oh, no, I won't set you on a target, don't worry. And um, is, is Helen unmuted now? Hi, Helen, can we hear you? No, maybe we'll hear from Helen, Helen later. Um, so I think we've run out of time now, but um, you know, I just think that the two of you, um, you know, we we love your passion and your energy, and I think you bring some real fun as well um, to Change Day. So you know, um, really appreciated that. Thank you very much, both of you, and I think we've had a few comments in the chat box as well. Um, you know, um, thanking you both. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. So can we um, can we go on now and um, hear from Lydia? And I'm really interested to hear, Lydia, what you're doing in terms of the paired learning program uh, between junior doctors and managers and uh, working together on service improvement projects and breaking down professional boundaries. So, uh, Lydia, we can see you. Right. And, uh, and, and we can hear you as well. So, fantastic. So, the virtual floor is yours. Thanks. Um, thanks. Uh, that was a really great presentation um, for Marie and Joan. I don't have any slides. But what I thought I'd talk about was um, why I decided to do this TED and what the kind of background was from it and then also what's been happening since Change Day as well. So I started in the NHS um, a few years ago as a receptionist and uh, one of the doctors said to me, if you're going to stay in the NHS, the one thing you should do is um, buddy up with a junior doctor because you'll just see a side of the hospital that you won't ever see through, you know, spending time with other clinicians. And it always kind of stuck with me. So when um, I joined the NHS graduate management training team after two years and um, had my first kind of operational management role, and I asked to shadow um, a junior doctor and spend time with a junior doctor, and the, you know, it was considered okay, but the kind of feedback back to me was, well, really you should be spending your time with the consultant because they're the decision makers and um, they're the people who are going to stick around for a long time and the junior doctor's always leaving every six months and, you know, that it's not a good place to invest your time. And um, I didn't really agree with that and started working with this um, clinical fellow who was a surgeon about to apply for the consultant post and he was quite interested to work with me because a client for consultant post wanted to know more about things for leadership and um and he he'd really never met a manager before as well. And we did a few different projects together, um one of which was on safer start times. And I think one of the best things that came out of it was through um a manager and a um registrar working together, we kind of allowed other um, members of the MDT to come together and we made an MDT group to look at safe to start times that hadn't really been done before and I think that was really started because other um, other people saw that we were working across different silos that hadn't really been done before which gave them permission to do that as well. Um, but it wasn't really just that that I enjoyed. I also thought that um, just spending time with a doctor and, you know, talking about what do you think about this and outpatients, what do you think about that? Um, and he would ask me, I don't understand the new NHS structure, you know, this is um, this was when the reforms were happening, so, uh, you know, what's happening with this, how do we get paid, you know, just so many questions, and it was through that that we really learned, and learned a lot about each other and really changed my perception of um, doctors in training and his perception of managers. So when I left that hospital and started at Birmingham Children's Hospital, which is where I am now, I thought it was a good opportunity for other people to get involved. And um, everyone was really supportive of it. And I think it's quite a small hospital, and that really helped people getting on board. And I also had a lot of support from the senior leadership and the board, which definitely helped. Um, so what I did was um, I made it my NHS Change Day pledge to set up a paired learning program, and I was quite um, keen right from the beginning that it, it would always be led by a pair who are on the program and I met someone called um, Nikki Kelly who's a paediatric intensive care registrar and me and her are um, a pair working together and our project is 
running this program. So she came along with me to things like when we approach the education and learning team about funding, she came with me so she could see that side and I also spent time with her um, on intensive care and um, doing other things like handover so I could see that side of things. So far at the moment we've got 60 participants, so that's 30 doctors and 30 managers and we paired them up and we sort of left it to them really because um, it's a program where you, people, it's completely voluntary, there's no you know that there's no requirement and therefore we don't really want to tell people what to do we just gave we paired them up gave them each other's email addresses and said go ahead here are some ideas of what you could do so we suggested shadowing each other we suggested talking about the key challenges in your role what um what are the kind of stereotypes that you've heard about a manager what are the stereotypes you've heard about a doctor you know in in a kind of worst case scenario, what's the worst thing that's happened when you've had an argument with a manager or an argument with a doctor and kind of talk about those sorts of things. And I also circulated a few videos and blogs and things like that so that um, people would be, have something to start a conversation if they wanted to start from um, a more, something more concrete. So for example, I circulated a blog about whether um, for the four-hour target achieved anything, and so that the people had something to start from. Um, and since then, loads of great stuff has happened. I think one of the barriers really is time, unsurprisingly. Everyone is really busy, and, and it can be difficult to, to find time to, in your diary to, to shadow someone when we know everyone is already really pressed. And, and so that I think that has been a challenge. Um, and but having said that, there there have been some some really great things that have come out of it, and um, other trusts are also getting interested in doing something else. The original paired learning program was started by Imperial in London, and there were also similar programs. And there's one in Manchester, um, and another in Kent, uh, run by another hobby actually. And um, so yes, yeah, um. I probably haven't gone through everything, but um, oh, the other thing I was going to mention is that we run monthly workshops. So as well as working together in pairs, um, everyone's invited to a monthly workshop which has different things. So, for example, we did one on wise managing change and then it's so difficult. Um, we've done another one on how to measure improvement. And anyone can just come and contribute and, and doc both doctors and managers are there and, and kind of talk about how that through working together it's changed their perception or really any, anything that we want to talk about and one of the things that i did right at the beginning is i went to junior doctor induction and to try and get people interested in the program and introduced myself to probably about 60 junior doctors and half of them had never met a manager before and i think that if we're going to um, work together to face the challenges in the nhs Really, if people have been a doctor for eight years and have never met a manager, it's not setting them up for a, a future in clinical leadership, and and you know, it, it's not setting a good precedent for communication between the teams, and that's really what Pair Learning is trying to change. Mm. Any questions or comments? <laughs> yeah, very good. So, um, so, um, what I was going to ask you, Lydia. Are other people in other places doing the same thing? Have you linked up with, um, you know, other people doing doing kind of similar pairing schemes? Yeah, there are people doing similar things, and um, um, yeah, we've spoken and and got ideas from other teams, and people are, people are doing things differently in different regions. So I know that in some regions they um, they've paired people across an area. So, so for example, in Manchester, it's not specific to a trust. So any you know anyone a sort of wider group, which I which also is good, especially with doctors doing on rotation and you know just different ways to run it. And I think it's just about finding what's the best way to run it for your area, your organisation. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's one of those things that has to be led from you know the it's sort of middle manager level and um, doctor level is mainly between like SP six and above. Um, so it's that kind of level, and I think it's important that it's not owned and run by the education or the OD team, the organisational development team. It's really run by us, and even though they're, they're really supportive in terms of, um, you know, we get we can use their rooms and stuff. Actually, it really should be led by the participants. Yeah, yeah, that's like a slide, you know, from the um, from the School for Healthcare and Radicals, which is like people um, will own what they help co-create. 
Mm. And and I think that um, you know the fact you own it yourself um, means that it's a different dynamic to the relationship, isn't it? That as if somebody yeah. was doing it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, um, I think that's a really really important point that you're making there. So would anybody else like to ask um, Lydia a question or um, give your views in terms of these kinds of parent schemes? Does anybody else work in an organisation that does this? If no one has any questions, I've got some examples of things that have happened that I can go through. If that would be okay. Give us, give us, yeah, give us an example. That would be great. So, um, one pair have they through working together, they basically realised how little a voice registrars and doctors in training had in the hospital. So they kind of pledged as a pair together to um, commit to having, or to sort of campaigning and influencing, to having a doctor in training representative at every decision-making forum in the trust. So for example, at directorate management team meetings or governance forums, and, and um, they're trying to influence that to, get, to have a representative from the um, doctors in training there, um, which I think is a really good one and, and has been quite successful so far. Um, another doctor um, and manager, so the, the manager spent a night shift on um, on paediatric intensive care and at the time was doing a business case for long-term ventilation in the in the trust and, and he, afterwards he really felt that through, through during that night shift he could articulate better in in the written business case, but also when presenting the business case, why we really needed um, a long-term ventilation unit. So that had, a, had sort of a direct impact on um, his work as a manager. Somebody else uh, paired with a facilities manager and, was, and is a surgeon, and he was noticing problems with the portal, or well, not problems with the portal, but was getting frustrated with the portal. So then through the through his pairing with the facilities manager, I did a night shift as a porter to really understand what the porter role is and, and what kind of difficulties they're having. And after doing that, he um, kind of got more of an insight into the role and, and also decided that when um, there was a, a review into an incident that happened, he was the one really pushing to have the porters there. So another way that it's, it's changed what's how people behave in the hospital. And lastly, someone who um, Kind of joined the course because um, she's interested in education, but wasn't really interested in clinical leadership. And and I think we found that a little bit as well that people who were interested in in teaching and things are quite interested in the course, but not necessarily thinking about going into clinical leadership. And and through doing the, this program and pairing with the manager, she really um, changed how she feels about clinical leadership and, and feels like she has more of a voice. So much so that she's really considering clinical leadership as a future career for herself. So I consider that a real success of the program as well. You know, um, Lydia, this is really fantastic, and you know, we've um, we've got this white paper um, which um, is being published today about the future direction of um, change and transformation in health and care. And one of the big messages in that is about getting people to have different conversations. Mm -hmm. And actually, if we got people together. And connected talking to each other um, who wouldn't normally do that, that actually we can ch make change happen so much more effectively. And I think you're um, a really great example of that. And, um, and I think that, you know, every organization should do um, what, what you and colleagues are doing. And I love the way that, you know, you're driving it yourselves and it isn't the training department that does it for you. You know, yeah. the, the kind of the momentum and the energy for doing it comes from yourselves. Um, I, I think it's really inspiring. And um, Thank you. would would love to kind of um, you know follow things more and kind of see where this gets. And I think that that you know every organisation should be encouraging the kind of um, pairing arrangements that 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 you're leading. So um, you know um, really really well done. And uh, we look forward to some fantastic pledges from you for 2015. Yeah, I'll have to link up with Maria actually because I'm also because I'm working at Children's Hospital. We're also looking at how can we get more primary schools and schools involved yeah. in the NHS change over the next year. So. Oh, that's well, that's a really good like pre-pledge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. So, so, um, so thank you so much.